We did hint uh, last week that we had a listener question, which uh, we've done a bit of digging, a little bit of research um, to find out, because Pierre in Singapore asked if we had any idea where the various ships of the multiple Genting brands were located. Uh, I think it was a surprise to many when when that uh, organization with its uh, three cruise brands there ceased, uh, ceased trading in the cruise market. Yeah, exactly. And it's been a little while. Um, we obviously had the, the big news when the, the Crystal Ocean going vessels were um, impounded in the Bahamas, um, but obviously the other ships, some were laid mm. up already and waiting to the restart, and others were currently in the mid of a restart, like uh, Singapore. So, uh, where should we start off with? Should we start with uh, Star Cruises? Let's go with Star Cruises. Yeah. So, I mean, if we if we look at the Star Cruises brand, they have three uh, mid-sized ships, and then they have mm-hmm. uh, one smaller um, smaller ship with only sixty guests. So, we'll start with her. Uh, her name's Taipan. She was built in 1989, and she's currently laid up in uh, Penang in Malaysia. And she was used mostly for charters, wasn't she? Yeah. So Penang is actually where, where, where three of these ships are, in fact. So the Star Pisces, built in 1991, and the Superstar Gemini, uh, which is the second uh, ship from Star Cruises to have that name. The first one was pretty popular uh, back mm-hmm. in, the, in the late 90s, early 2000s, but this one's a, a slightly bigger ship. Um, and she was built in 1992, and um, they're both in, in Penang as well. Uh, Aquarius, um, built in 1993, actually had a long career with uh, Norwegian Cruise Line before she moved across to um, Star Cruises, um, and she is laid up in Port Klang in Malaysia. So that's the that's the four ships yeah. of the Star Cruises fleet. Then we have Dream Cruises, and they had two brand new builds and a third that was on the way, and they also converted uh, what was Superstar Virgo to be um, one of the Dream vessels. Yeah, so, so I mean, if you think about Superstar Virgo, she was converted to become Explorer Dream um, mm-hmm. some, some time back now, and she was one of the first ships that was uh, reintroduced to the to the cruising public after the uh, after the COVID pandemic, if you recall, um, mm-hmm. sailing out of Taiwan. Uh, she entered service in 1999. She was actually one of a duo of ships. The other one was Superstar Leo, which now currently sails for um, Norwegian Cruise Line. We should probably say that Norwegian Cruise Line and Star Cruises did originally have quite a close um uh, relationship back in the 90s yeah. and early 2000s so that's probably why there's so many crossovers there um, and uh, the the renamed uh, Explorer Dream she uh, carries about 2,000 guests and she's currently laid up in Port Klang as well where she's been since March of this year. And then we've got the the Singapore the Hong Kong based ship so we'll start with World Dream who was up in Singapore. Yeah so World Dream is one of those newer ones that you're referring to 2017 she entered service about three and a half or 3,400 guests um, she'd been resuming had resumed sailing out of uh, out of Singapore Singapore, and we've been very successful. We've spoken about it many times before, um, and she's currently laid up in Marina Bay in Singapore. And then the Genting Dream, which had actually commenced uh, operations out of Hong Kong, um, she entered service the year prior, a very similar design, so same passenger capacity, uh, and she actually is now just off Hong Kong. The third newer ship that we were going to talk about is the Global Dream, which had been um, expected to enter service this year. Um, it's currently under construction in Germany, and it, and I think there's a big question mark over what's going to happen with that ship. Um, now we'll move over to Crystal next. We'll start off with their ocean-going vessels. Mm. Um, of course, we've got the the two existing vessels that have been well loved and v- very um, much loved by the Crystal guests for for some time. And of course, the new expedition ship, which uh, only just came into service um, oh, yes. prior to this all kind of going quiet. Of course, uh, and it looks so um, promising, particularly in the lead up to the pandemic. So Crystal Symphony was uh, the second of, uh, of, a, of, a, of those types of ships for Crystal Cruises. The first one was Crystal Harmony, which left the fleet some time ago. Mm-hmm. Um, but the Symphony was built in 1995. She has uh, around about 900 passengers. She's, she's very well-renowned as uh, being a luxury experience, um, and she's in Freeport in the Bahamas. Um, the Crystal Serenity is a larger version of the Crystal Symphony, so she was kind of uh, – they took all the best elements of the Symphony and then scaled it up. Um, yeah, yeah. It's only got a hundred extra guests, but the ship itself is a bit more sort of it has a bit more of a, a presence because it's a bit larger, um, and it also is in Freeport in the Bahamas. Uh, and then the Crystal Endeavour, which is that uh, two hundred passenger sort of expedition ship that you were referring to, uh, she's at anchor off Gibraltar. And I just realised I missed one, Crystal Esprit. She was the little yacht that they were using predominantly around uh, Croatia and the Greek Isles and up in the Seychelles. Um, she actually popped up in Cruise News a little bit later because she's actually been acquired and converted for another cruise line. Mm. Um, Lindblad National Geographic are using her over in the Galapagos. She's already back in operation. Well, fantastic, yeah. And she's very well, you know, that expedition design, very well suited for that kind of role. 
And then we also have the Crystal River cruise ships, Baz. Yeah, and again, with this brand, they've got the the Crystal Mozart, which was the larger vessel. It actually is the largest river cruise vessel afloat, I believe. And then they've got the four sister ships, which they built specifically for, for the Rhine. And then we've got the, the four sisters, the Crystal Back, the Debussy, the Mahala, and the Ravel, all built in 17 and 18. Um, they're in a boatyard um, just kind of northwest of Nijmegen and Rotterdam, so about halfway along that river there. And right. uh, they've been there for a couple of months now. You know, quite a lot of ships displaced, and uh, I believe some of them are, are currently being managed by V-Ships, which, of course, is a, a, a management agent that looks after after ships. They've um, been able to look after ships that are sort of a bit displaced, uh, and hopefully we'll see a, a future home for some of these ships, such as the World Dream and, uh, and Genting Dream. They're so new and so... Um, sort of modern in terms of their amenities and passenger comforts that you, you would assume that they'll be able to find something for them in the future. Yeah, and I believe there's a couple of groups that are, are actually um, trying to save the Crystal brand and the mm. Crystal assets and come back uh, with a, a new version of Crystal. So yeah. we'll, we'll wait and keep that, uh, keep that front of mind as and when things come out on that one for everybody. Chris, let's take a quick break and then we'll come back and uh, start what will be a bumper edition of Cruise News yet again. <laughs> 